Aum. Aham akasha vatsarvam bahirantar gato chutaha Sada sarva samasiddho nishango nirmalo chalaha Aham I Akashavat, like space, sarvang, all things, bahihi, without, antaha, within, gataha, fill up, achutaha, changeless, sada, always, sarvasamaha, same in all, siddhaha, self-realized, nishangaha, unattached, Nirmalaha, stainless, achalaha, unmoving. I fill all things inside and out like space, changeless and the same in all. I am self-realized, unattached, stainless, and unmoving. Namaste. So this is a continuation of the Bhuta Shuddhi prayer, or meditation, really. And it talks about the qualities of Brahman. But it does so only in relation to the material existence. Because after all, in its own view, Brahman has no qualities. It is completely uniform. Unary. There is not like one side of Brahman and the other side of Brahman. <laughs> it's one thing, boundaryless, infinite. So these qualities of uh, feeling everything inside and out and so on are only in relation with the material world. Because these are the comparisons, these are the contrasts between Brahman and what we know in our everyday experience. Like space. Space is everywhere. Everything needs space to exist, isn't it? In fact, one of the qualities of existence is to occupy space. So, <laughs> you cannot say that Brahman occupies space because there is no space in Brahman. Yet, from the material point of view, Brahman seems to be everywhere and in everything, just like space. Like, for example, we say, well, there's a space inside the pot and then there's a space outside. But the only real difference between the space inside the pot and outside the pot is our calling it that. In other words, name and form, material identification, the material relativities of inside and outside. Otherwise, the space is absolutely the same. You can't tell any qualitative difference between the space in the pot and the space outside. Well, Brahman is the same. Brahman is everywhere and in everything. But there's no qualitative difference between the Brahman that's in me and the Brahman that's in you. So, Brahman is one, non-dual, boundaryless, infinite, what does that mean? Infinite. It has no end. There's nowhere that you can say, okay, this is Brahman on this side, and on this side, this is something else. No. Brahman has no boundaries. It is dimensionless. It itself is spaceless. Because in space, you have the possibility of dimension. And in Brahman, there is no possibilities. So, 
the thing is, we're projecting. We're always projecting. We're always superimposing uh, material qualities on Brahman, if only to contrast it with the material existence to which we have become so accustomed. So when I say changeless, for example, Brahman is changeless. Well, that's in contrast to the material world where everything is changing all the time. Everything in the material existence is subject to six changes. Conception, gestation, birth, growth, production of byproducts, and dwindling. And the seventh change is death, which brings rebirth. So this has been known for an awfully long time. Yet modern people seem to have no awareness of it. They identify so strongly with the material body that they think this is real and this is forever. But no, the material body is changing. Now it's born and it's producing byproducts. But in the future, it will dwindle and eventually die. So this is the reality. We have to prepare for this reality. See, a moderately intelligent person tries to optimize this life, to make this life as comfortable and secure and enjoyable as possible. But a truly intelligent person tries to optimize the next life because he knows someday this life is going to be over. And then what comes next? Do we really want to be born again in another form, in another time and place, and go through these same six changes over and over again? I don't. Do you? At some point, you have to make up your mind and say, no, this is not for me. This is not who I am. This is not myself. I am more than this. I am better than this. I deserve a better type of existence than this temporary material Sangsara, which is compared to a burning forest. Huh? If one is lost in the forest and then uh, there's a forest fire and you become surrounded by the flames, there's no escape. So in the same way, those who are stuck in this material conception of life have no escape from the periodic birth and death and rebirth and again suffering in the material world, on and on and on and on. So just like the material energy, the maya, is beginningless, it's also endless. So there is no end to the suffering of material existence. It goes on and on and on until you decide to end it by realizing Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. I have no beginning and no end, no boundary and no separation. I am always and everywhere in everything. And the symptom of my existence is consciousness. At the beginning, simply awareness of myself. And then in the world, awareness of everything else, which we call consciousness. Awareness with an object. Sometimes these objects exist and sometimes they don't. But that has no effect on me. I am always aware in every condition. I am always existing whether anything else exists or not. So this is Brahman, limitless, penetrating all, present everywhere, 
filling up everything, inside and out. Limitless, boundaryless, infinite. And then changeless and the same everywhere. Just like if you go to the ocean and you taste it, taste salty. And then you can go on the other side, you know, from the Atlantic to the Pacific or whatever, and taste that ocean. It also tastes salty. So this ocean is the same everywhere and the same with Brahman. It's like an ocean of consciousness, a limitless, shoreless ocean that is of the same quality everywhere you taste it. What is that quality? Awareness. Even when Brahman is in emptiness, shunyata, nothingness, nowhere, no time, huh? It is still of the flavor of awareness. The taste of awareness is the taste of Brahman. So if you check, you will always find that you are aware, even in a dream or even in deep sleep, if you can enter deep sleep with awareness or remembering deep sleep afterwards and realizing that I was aware. I knew that there was nothing. There was just a blank space of time. See, that is Brahman. Knowing that I am the self in all, and I am the same everywhere. There is no break. There is no difference, no change, no movement. No attachment to any particular thing. I am frictionless. Nothing can get a grip on me. I have no location. Because I am everywhere. There is nowhere where I am not. So actually, I have no location. Our infinite location. <laughs> All locations. And I am stainless. I am not changed by any conditions in the material existence. Even though they may seem very powerful, all penetrating and all transforming, even the complete destruction of the material universe has no effect on me. Because I am Brahman. I have no location, therefore I have no movement. I cannot go from this place to the other place because I'm already there. See? And there is no perception of time. There is no time, there's no motion, no location. All these things are material qualities. And of course, we try to project them. We try to superimpose them on Brahman. But that is only for the purpose of describing how different Brahman is from the material creation. And that is the purpose of this Bhuta Shuddhi prayer. Aum Tatsa Aum Shakti Aum Aum Namah Shivaya